In this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid Google penalties so something like this doesn't happen to your website's organic traffic. And let's say, heaven forbid, that you've already been hit by the Google ban hammer, I'll show you how to recover from it. But before we get started, you might be asking, what actually is a Google penalty? This occurs when your blog or website does something to piss off the almighty Google and your search engine rankings and traffic fall off a cliff. But these drops don't have to be so dramatic. Even gradual decreases in traffic can be caused by a penalty. Let me tell you a story about my first experience with Google penalties. The year was 2013. Macklemore's thrift shop was the hottest song of the year. And the Harlem Shake meme became super popular because because reasons. Little SEO Matt had hit an all-time revenue high on his affiliate website portfolio and life was good. Real good. One morning I wake up and head over to my computer to do the daily check of my Google rankings and traffic. Lo and behold, I was decimated. Every single website, every single blog had dropped 80% traffic or more. I was finished. That evening, I headed over to the bar where my SEO buddies would hang out. It happened to everyone else. Google smashed everyone. Not a soul was spared. What happened? We all got smashed by the Penguin update. And at that point in time, I was forced to make a big decision. Give up on search engine optimization and apply at Subway? Mmm, tuna sandwiches. Or pick up the pieces and vow I would never get hit by a Google penalty again. Thankfully, for Subway's sake, I decided to stay on the SEO path. Plus, I figured out why my site got penalized, which I'll tell you about later. In case we haven't met before, my name is Matt Diggity, and I run an agency called The Search Initiative. New clients come to us all the time with their sites in shambles. Everything's going fine and dandy. Traffic had been growing steadily for years, then all of a sudden, the rug gets pulled out and the traffic goes poof. Recovering from Google penalties is what we do, and we're quite good at it. Like here where we 91 x our clients' traffic after digging their site out of a Google graveyard. And in this video, I'm going to share everything I know about recovering from Google penalties. But, you know what they say, the best way to recover from a Google penalty is not to get one in the first place. Just kidding, no one actually says that, but they should. If you're serious about growing your organic traffic on Google, it's in your best interest to be aware of the various types of Google penalties. You can only avoid what you're aware of. Now step one in avoiding Google penalties is to smash the like button. Just kidding, I'm pretty sure it doesn't help at all, but just in case, maybe you should just smash it anyways. It helps my channel out a ton and lets YouTube and me know you want to see more content like this. The first step in dealing with Google penalties is figuring out if you were actually penalized in the first place. There's a lot of false alarms and you want to make sure you're not overreacting. For example, your website might just be detrending. Let's say you have a website in the keto diet niche and it's been losing traffic over time. If you type the keyword keto diet into Google Trends, you can easily see that this topic has been losing traction since 2019. So your website might still be in Google's favor and unpenalized, but less people are searching for it so it looks like Google broke up with you. Another false alarm occurs because of typical fluctuations in Google's ranking results. There's a keyword domain value, as in how much is the domain worth? It's got a ton of search volume. Right now I rank number three for domain value, but sometimes I'm second and sometimes I'm seventh. This is the Google dance. Rankings fluctuate. It's normal. But because of the search volume on domain value, this can make a big impact on traffic. And when this happens to you, it may sometimes seem like you're penalized, but you're really not. Another false alarm is seasonality. If your website is about outdoor sports, you're going to see a lot more search volume in the summer months. If you're in the education niche, your traffic might spike when college applications are due. After the spikes in traffic, it may seem like your traffic is getting wrecked, but there's a logical seasonal explanation for it. That said, there's two types of actual Google penalties that you need to look out for. Manual penalties and algorithmic penalties. A manual penalty occurs when Google Google finds out that your website is doing something that is blatantly against their guidelines. And what's happened is that an actual human from Google's spam team has reviewed this violation and manually placed an action on your site, a quote unquote manual action. Now there's various types of manual penalties that you can get dinged by. The good thing is they're listed out clearly and we'll review them later in the video. How you figure out if you have a manual penalty is quite simple. You log into Google Search Console, head on down to the Security and Manual Actions section, and click on Manual Actions. That'd be pretty damn embarrassing if I had one in this video demo, so whichever SEO gods were watching out for me, I thank you. If you do have a manual penalty, this is an example of what it might look like. What we're looking at here is an unnatural inbound links manual action, which is caused by really f***ing up your link building. There's actually a bright side to getting spanked by a manual penalty and it has nothing to do with SNM. See these numbered steps in the GSC notification? They actually give you instructions on how to fix it. The most important step here is at the bottom. Submit a reconsideration request. Please note, you will never recover from a manual penalty unless you go through Google system and submit a reconsideration request. Even if you fixed everything perfectly, you still need to let Google know that you want someone to review it, and then wait for their reply with fingers crossed. 
Algorithmic penalties are different. There's no actual notification letting you know you got penalized. There's no manual action in your GSC account saying, hey dummy, your links are terrible, go fix them. So figuring out if you have an algorithmic penalty is a bit more complicated. Let's say you had a website that lost traffic on a specific day, like this website that got massacred on December 3rd, 2020. You'd want to find this article by Moz that lists out all the Google updates since the year 2000 and try to figure out if you got wrecked on the date of an update. Lo and behold, there indeed was an update on December 3rd. Happy holidays! Now it's just a matter of figuring out what they changed in that update so you can fix your site. Let's say you had a huge traffic drop today and there's no update in that mods list yet. What then? Head on over to one of the many algorithm update sensors like Algoru, which can show you if there's been a huge change in the algo. Now one piece of advice, if you get hit with the algorithmic update penalty, try not to freak out and make big changes to your site right away. First, because Google very often rolls back the changes they've made. Google commonly tests new ranking factors, and sometimes they don't work as expected, so they roll them back and rankings return to normal. Second, because no one, and I really mean no one, has any clue what Google changed right after an update. You need to let the dust settle and give the pros time to analyze what changed. Back in the day, it was a lot easier to figure out what algo updates were all about. Penguin was about backlinks. These days, it's much different, as I'll show you shortly. How to fix algorithmic penalties depends entirely on what kind of penalty you got. So let's jump into that now. The first and most common algorithmic penalty you'll experience occurs on a Google Core algorithm update. Since 2013, Google has been releasing Core algorithm updates, which basically wrap a whole bunch of other minor updates into a single release. Because of this, if you got hit during a Core update, it really could have been because of anything. Your links, your content, your site speed, everything is on the table. So if you're hit and you're sure it was on the date of a Core update, what do you do? You need to do a complete website audit. During core updates, it's very unlikely to get any help from Google on what they focused on. Besides, they tweak so many things in these updates that they probably don't even know. You need to assume that it could have been anything and everything that was the cause of your ranking drop. Here's a list of things to take a look at. Is your site mobile friendly? Is only one version of your site indexed? Is your site fast enough? Are you passing Core Web Vitals? Do you have schema errors? Have you fixed zombie pages? Do you have indexing issues? Check your content quality. Is your content optimized? Is your content thin or low value? Have you properly covered your topics in full? Is your link profile spammy? Is your anchor text over optimized? Do you have broken links? Is your bounce rate too high? Have you been hacked? Are you getting negative SEO? Have you properly established EAT? You want to start crossing these checks off one by one. For example, with a backlink audit, most of the time I wouldn't submit a disavow file unless I got hit with a manual penalty. We'll get to them later. But in a core algorithm situation, you want to eliminate variables one by one. You need to cross this damn backlink audit off your list so you can move on to the other potential issues. This is just a subset of the items that you should check in a complete website audit. And going into any one of these items in detail would take another YouTube video by itself. That said, I don't want to leave you hanging. Personally, I find the best way to learn is through example. In the description, I left a link to an article where I walk you through the steps you need to take in a complete website audit after a core algorithm update penalty. If you've been hit by a core update, my suggestion is to follow that guide step by step because it will handhold you the entire way. Or if you want me to take a look for you, you can reach out using the contact form at my agency, The Search Initiative. Also, one important thing to note, after you clear the issues of a core update, most likely you'll have to wait until the next core update in order to see improvement. Sorry, I didn't write the code, that's just the way it is. By the way, I'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, and that's Ahrefs. Ahrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool that many search engine optimization professionals, including myself, use to get their job done. It really does do more things than I can count, but for me particularly, I use it for site audits, which help me evaluate the technical SEO health of my website so Google will love them, competitor research, in particular, reverse engineering the keyword research and backlink strategies of my competition, and Content Explorer, which helps me figure out high search volume, low competition topics to write about. This kind of data is absolutely critical for doing in SEO these days, and it's nearly impossible to get by yourself. And best of all, just because you hit the like button, Ahrefs is offering a free version called Ahrefs Webmaster Tools or AWT. Just go to ahrefs.com forward slash AWT to check it out today. Now back to the video. The next algorithmic penalty you can run into is the Panda penalty. Panda is content-based. It has to do with the quality of your content and whether or not you violated content-based guidelines. Here's a list of triggers that can piss off Kung Fu Panda. Thin content. If you have a bunch of pages that offer no value, this can set off Panda. Duplicate content. 
content. If you're scraping content from other places on the internet and using it as yours, that's not a good thing. Low quality content. These are pages that provide little value to readers because they lack in-depth information. This is a pitfall for those using AI for content generation. Low quality user generated content. For example, if you're posting up crap guest posts on your site, Google wouldn't be impressed by the crap. And a high ad to content ratio. If your site looks like this, where 90% of what people see is ads, Google hates that. Panda used to be periodically rolled out on Google, meaning that if Panda 1.0 came out, you'd have to wait for Panda 2.0 before your changes could be noticed. Now, Panda runs in near real time, updating itself on a monthly or quarterly basis. That's a good thing. If you think you've been hit by Panda, it's time to do a content overhaul and make sure you're not violating anything in this Panda trigger list. Then after it's all cleaned up, just sit back and wait for your recovery. Penguin is another penalty that also used to run periodically, but it's in near real time now as well. The difference is that while Panda is a content-based algorithm, Penguin is link-based. Here's your callback. Remember that story I told you when my affiliate website portfolio got wiped out? I got hit by Penguin. At the time, all the cool kids were using a link building software called SE Nuke XCR. And like an idiot, I wanted to be cool too, except I was running the software directly on my website, generating thousands of crappy links to my site in a single day. I was a really bad SEO newbie. <laughs> Penguin has two main triggers. The first is link quality. You want to seriously minimize the amount of links that you're getting from spammy sites. And instead, you want to get links that are as close as possible to seed sites. Seed sites are the super trusted websites on the internet that Google thinks are best. If you get a link directly from a seed site, that's awesome, but super rare. If you get a link from another website that has a link from a seed site, that's the next best thing. The second penguin trigger goes off when your links look unnatural. If you have an anchor text profile that is predominantly targeted rich anchor text, Google knows that would never happen in the real world, so they assume you're manipulating your link building. I held a webinar on creating natural anchor text, link in the description. Check it out after this video. If your links aren't diverse enough, you'll create a footprint that looks unnatural as well. Let's say all the links you're building are from link insertions. That is, you're emailing people and asking them to update articles with a link to your site. Well, according to the Google documentation on link schemes, any behavior that manipulates links to your site is considered a link scheme. In the natural world, people updating articles to point links to new sites is pretty rare. So if you have a large portion of links created this way, you're busted, dude. Start supplementing with guest posts. You gotta keep your links diverse. If you're hit by Penguin, the best course of action is to clean up your link profile, but do it manually. Actually reach out to the websites that you want your link taken down from and have them remove it. If all else fails, then you create a disavow file. By the way, if you'd like me to make a training on how to create a disavow file, let me know in the comments. The next algorithm penalty has never been announced or even named. In fact, I'm the one who discovered it and I can assure you that it exists. It's an algorithm that looks at your ratio of informational versus commercial content in an applies especially for affiliate websites. On December 3rd, 2020, there was a huge Google update. The Mozcast algorithm sensor was off the charts and affiliate websites like Gear Hungry, Improv, and Best of Machinery were crumbling left and right. I got freaking hit too, but as you can see, I recovered once I figured out what was wrong. I ran a correlation study with the content software tool Surfer and found that the more commercial review content, like best golf drivers you had on your site, in proportion to informational content, stuff like how to swing a golf club, the more you got hit in the update. Let me give you my honest opinion on something. Google puts out these product review updates with huge release notes on how they want you to write affiliate product reviews. In my opinion, this is a wish list. I don't think they have the capability to check for half of this stuff, but something like informational to commercial ratios, that's easy. And I commonly see affiliate websites recover from going to work on this ratio. Depending on your specific niche, a different ratio will be optimal for you. Check out my video on informational versus commercial ratios after you finish this video. Link in the description. Now we get into the manual penalties you can encounter. There's 14 different types of manual penalties you can get, but I've narrowed it down to the five that you're most likely to encounter in your lifetime. Starting with unnatural inbound links. As you know, you get a notification when you receive a manual action and the unnatural inbound links one looks like this. Some things to point out. In the first sentence, they say that your site has a pattern of links that are unnatural. But according to the link schemes guidelines, anything you do to build links is unnatural. Then how are you supposed to compete in an algorithm where backlinks get results? It's actually pretty easy. You just don't build links that are blatantly obvious that you built them. For example, scholarship link building was a technique that used to work well back in the day until Google smashed it because the only reason anyone would ever run a scholarship campaign was to build links to their site. 
That's another reason I try to avoid getting links in author boxes. They basically scream, hey, I wrote this article so I could get a link. Also, in the opening paragraph, they explain that they've demoted the value of backlinks in determining your rankings. It's like they've turned off the dial on one of the most important ranking factors. That's why you need to get this fixed with a reconsideration request ASAP. And down below, they tell you how to fix it. First, download all your links. I definitely recommend going beyond their suggestion of just downloading from Google Search Console. It's never the complete picture. Get more links from Ahrefs, SEMrush, whatever you got. Then start to audit your link profile for artificial links. To me, I just look at the obviously artificial links. By Google's definition, all links you would have built are artificial. Contact the site owners to get those taken down, disavow the rest, then submit your reconsideration request. Bear in mind they never mention anything about unnatural anchor text explicitly, but that is definitely a reason you can get hit by this penalty. So make sure you have a natural anchor text distribution. If you want help with recovering from unnatural links penalties, use the link audit service from Authority Builders. 100% success rate or your money back. Next we have thin content with little or no added value. This manual action is definitely more brief, but their message is clear. They don't want you to have a large percentage percentage of low quality pages. That could mean thin pages with not much content, but most likely you got hit by one of the following. Cheap AI content. As of today, most GPT-3 AI content generators are hard to detect. The GPT-2 ones can be detected by third-party tools, so you can bet your buns Google can detect it too. Scraped content. If you stole, or should I say borrowed, a bunch of content from other sites, you can get dinged and thin affiliate pages. We're talking about pages that are mostly images that just look like a doorway to another page. Google hates these. Next, and this one sucks because you don't have much control over this, is the site abused with third-party spam manual penalty. Yes, that's right. If your users mess around on your site, you'll get a second kick in the dick too. This can show up in the comment section of your blog or a forum if you have one. It can also happen if you get hacked and someone is building pages with a bunch of casino links. Luckily, Google will only penalize the portion of your site with the spam. They're good about that. To clean this up, you need to delete the offending content. Definitely beef up your security and change your user-generated content settings, and of course, send a reconsideration request. The next manual penalty is called spammy free host. This one is super rare, but I've definitely seen it before. This one happens when you've cheaped out on your hosting service to such a degree, you went with a host that's so bad that all the websites hosted alongside you are absolute spam. Google says this penalty happens only to free hosts, but it can indeed also happen on the super cheap hosts as well. To get it fixed, get off your terrible host. For beginners, I recommend SiteGround, and when you level up, I recommend WPX. The next one is spammy structured markup. If you're gonna get one penalty, this is the one. It's super easy to trigger if you put schema markup on your site. The notification tells you you got hit because you may have marked up content that users can't see, or marking up the wrong content. But the more likely scenario is that schema syntax has changed and what used to work before or doesn't work now. To fix this one, you have three steps. First, brush up on the schema guidelines, then implement the fixes and check them over with the structured data testing tool. And lastly, subscribe for more videos just like this one.